Let's go right into this week's topic, guys. The first one is uh, coming into us from Housing Wire. This is agent commission lawsuit casts a long shadow over VA and FHA borrowers. So one of the most contentious issues in the minds of mortgage professionals recently is how the ruling might affect FHA and VA mortgage buyers. Let's start talking about that right now, guys. We have a ton of yeah. VA buyers. We need to talk specifically first about some of the technicalities regarding this, what that means for VA, what it could mean, and also let's then bring some positivity to it and what we think will happen because of that. So <laughs> what, what's, wants positive, to start? what's really positive about this, right? Like, I have an answer. I'm going to come back to it. But tell uh, yeah, me. rebuttal it, right? But here's the thing. Like we're thinking this thing, a lot of people are for it and there's a lot of people that are against it. Mm -hmm. You know, I happen to be one of these people that I'm against this, what's happening, especially with this whole affordability crisis, right? VA and FHA. Well, guess guys, VA, how much money do they put down for their down payment? Zero. Zero. You know, and a lot of times they have a hard time paying their closing cost. Yeah. And now to ask them to cover the buyer's representation, that's going to be pretty difficult to do. Right. And then again, then we go with the FHA. Okay, so we got FHA 3.5% down. A lot of the our clients that are looking for FHA, they're also looking for down payment assistance. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so, the 3.5% might be what they have. Oh, but you know what's going to happen? I think they're going to get creative. Just like any type of financing has been creative, like uh, the Cal FHA, I think they're going to have Cal FHA down payment assistance to pay your broker. Probably. Your I've, buyer's agent, who yeah. knows? But- it's not going to be fair enough there for the, our veterans, right? Well, so so here's the thing, and the, let's let's uncat let's let's unsurface the the fairness part or the fairness point of this is is there is a limit to what a VA buyer can pay for closing costs and fees. That is four percent. So yeah. let's say that if they were now to put the buyer fee on their side of the fence, not on the seller side from the seller's proceeds, that would exceed what VA buyers are allowed to have as closing costs. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, let's share with everybody a little bit. Some of those closing costs of 4% that we get to, or that, that may be part of the deal are to buy down the rate in some circumstances. That's correct. Pay closing costs, third-party fees and expenses connected to closing an escrow, okay. which are on sometimes 2 to 3% of the total purchase price. So if you add another 2 or 3% because the agent commission, they exceed the 4%, they can't do it. This is a big problem for BA, BA buyers potentially. Yeah. The reason I'm saying it's not one now is because it's not now. Yeah. And here's a very, very nuanced, critical argument I heard made about this case specifically for VA. It is this. When the person is buying the house at $500,000 and the seller is paying the commission for both sides, that's already baked into the price. The buyer is the one that is getting the VA loan for $500,000 at 100% financing. They are all ready paying for it correct because it's in the price it's not that they're paying five hundred thousand dollars and on the side paying the commission it's already in there so i think there is a way through this and i think that this is really going to be a technicality of law fair and a technicality of contract law more than it is well tit for tat they pay this i pay that <laughs> yeah Yes, no. Yeah. But right here it says that even the, the VA, the Department of Veterans Affairs rules prohibit VA borrowers from paying any real estate commission. So now we would have to basically redo all the rules and all the laws just so it could fit this one case. But it doesn't stop there because at the end of the day, it's already baked in the commission, like you said. So then why do you have baked to- Baked in then, the price. Baked yeah. In the, yeah, yeah, baked in the price. I'm sorry. It's already baked in the price. So then why do you have to then again go and charge for another fee if it's already basically- in well, then it opens up the argument. Okay, fine. You can have a three percent commission on five hundred thousand dollars. That's fifteen grand. Fine. Then reduce the price by fifteen grand. Yeah. Okay, seller, you want to reduce your price by fifteen grand, and I'll pay my own closing costs. What are sellers going to say? It's net net no different. Yeah. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. So I think that there's a level of this where it, it's not just case by case. It's going to be type by type. Yeah. Because there's an FHA case we made here too. Again, let's go FHA. <laughs> yeah. Five hundred thousand uh, dollar purchase price. They're going to put three and a half percent down. Well, guess what? If they're buying it for five hundred thousand dollars, even if they're bringing three and a half percent down. The price currently includes yeah. the commission for the selling agent and the buying agent. Yeah, I don't, I don't so, understand this. What is really going on? No. I think they're just trying to take control, you know, more control and take away, you know, how to say it, accessibility for the buyer to, you know, be free to do whatever they want. But at the same time, they said it's already a free market. 
but that's what they're arguing that it isn't a free market and they want to basically put it out to be a free market but then I'm like wait don't you get to choose who you work with don't you sign what it is that you're agreeing to pick what house you aren't you already on. knowing what house you want to buy and if the agent says hey you should buy this one you could tell them to go F off because hey I really like this one so for me it's kind of like yo what, what what is free market then let, let, give me the definition of free market so that I understand because maybe this isn't a free market <laughs> but then it goes to the exact same thing if we switch over to a different type of you know structure there has to be some set price and at the same time someone has to agree with to it and someone needs to be you know in agreements all around to be like hey this is what's gonna get paid that goes there this goes there or else you know there's no buyer's agents That's and people it. don't want to buy okay so <laughs> offline before before the show i was actually watching a commentary about this and there was someone giving the example where the buyer in a municipality uh, the buyer's mm. uh, commission was actually re- taken out the buyer buyer's agents cannot receive commission for doing ah. real estate in a uh, real estate transactions in this particular town and what they found was that sellers would still like to put a commission in for a buying agent so that they would have more visibility for their listing. Hello. So even oh. though even though the municipality had basically made it illegal to have a buyer's agent paid a commission for doing real estate activities in the yeah. transaction of real estate, the market said we still want them. Yeah. So so does this even matter that there's a rule because our isn't the free market going to figure its own way around this? Well, it's going to it's going to bring exposure to the property, right? When you're offering a commission, it's just going to bring that much more exposure. Right. So every seller has a different circumstance. There's some sellers that hey, you know what? I'll wait a year and there's other ones that I can't. I got a job somewhere else, so I'm going to sure. have to sell this property, so therefore, how do I make it enticing? And encourage buyers to come in, look at my property. And I think also this is being handled with a kind of opinion or perspective that all situations are made equal and they're not the same. (laughs) I'm going to tell you something very personally to to me. When my grandparents had to sell their house because my grandfather died and my grandmother had Alzheimer's, they were, she was not in a position where she was the one making the decisions. The family needed the help of an agent to sell the house Mm -hmm. and was happy to pay a buyer's agent to help promote, to to bring a buyer to the house. So yes, that's a one nuanced situation. The majority of homes are people buying a regular piece of residential real estate. It's the first one. It's not a a death, a sale because of a death or anything like that. But the, 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 the idea that we could just broadly treat this class action lawsuit for every situation, it's going to have a variety of impacts and they will not all be the same. Some will be more heavy and detrimental than others. So let's look at it on the flip side. So if owners still want to give a commission to buyers, then what if the listing agent is the one that's kind of like the odd one out here because they're the one that quote unquote set that price. But then if you take away the listing agent and now the the seller carries out the transaction, they can still incentivize a buyer's agent to, hey, bring me somebody because, quote unquote, what does the risk listing agent do for you? They take out the contracts and make sure that you have all this, all the right people, you know, sending the offers that they're qualified. But at the same time, it's, it goes back to the if the seller of the house is savvy and he's okay with doing all that stuff, then okay, great, sell it on your own. But yeah. if not, goes back to if you're not an expert and you don't read contracts all the time or you don't have a general a general idea of how this works, then you do need the agent because then you can get screwed over. You can have somebody offer bad terms and you're like, yeah, this looks great. And then still not sell your house. So I think it's a case by case. And we've always said this real estate is not a one size fits all. So therefore you can't generalize everybody's transaction under one type of, you know, rule or one type of way of doing things. Yeah. And, and here's yeah. the other thing I'll say too is even, yeah, even if you flip the rever- reverse, the roles, the, the market's going to, the free market's yeah. going to figure out a way to fix it. But here's the other deal. Let's go back to the, the case of a $500,000 sale. Let's say that, oh, well, the buyer's agent is not going to be able to be compensated from the sale of the house at $500,000. Well, that would be a $15,000 commission. Just sell the house for five fifteen. Hello. And then the seller can pay him outside mm-hmm. yeah. and the seller can pay the buyer's agent somehow. And then if that's still not permitted and that's still made illegal or whatever, some other solution is going to show up. Is this going to go to attorneys? Are we just going to use real estate attorneys to close transactions now? Are we only going to use escrow officers? Are we going to cross train them and all the same rules and regulations yeah. and all the commitments of, uh, of, of professional practice that realtors are held yeah. to? I mean, th- it, there's a lot other, there's a lot of other things going on than just this. And I think part of what is happening is that the fintech companies are, are hoping that there will be a technological solution to fill the vacancy and void of buyers agents. But that does not necessarily mean that all the experience shows up mm-hmm. like, 
the person does with agency experience, yeah, with exactly. hundreds or in your case, thousands of transactions experience yeah. that matters. Yeah. So, you know, when a company needs to basically, you know, free up capital, they start letting go people or they, you know, you know, save money, they start letting go of people. Of course. So I feel that, you know, as a whole, they're probably looking at this. Hey, well, if we get rid of the, the buyers or we get rid of the agents or minimize the commissions, maybe that somehow will alleviate the market and bring prices down or cool some sort of, you know, some sort of craziness in this market. When in reality, the people on the ground are the ones that move the market, the ones that make the, the sales go to where they need to be to because of the fact that, hey, if this house isn't selling, then, hey, mm. you need someone to give it exposure. That person has a big uh, book of, uh, uh, of people that he does business with. Yeah. So it gives you more opportunities to be able to sell it. So, I mean, I think it depends on what market you're at. Like, if you're in a small market and you know the 100 people that are in your market, you might not need an agent. But if you're in a big metropolis, like here in San, Di uh, San Diego, then you, chances are you're going to need somebody to help you out because there's just too much people. Yeah. Yeah. So something else I want to talk to you guys about in relation to this, it, it's, there's, you know, this, there's articles focusing mostly, mostly on FHA and VA, but here's, here's the case with, with those two. There have been circumstances where the agents had to come to terms and go, you know what? These people are short by $1,500 to close. It's easier to just close. Let's let's both let's have it. We both make uh, commission reductions and send those to escrow. We both yeah. take a little bit of hit on the commission. So now what we're saying is, if you eliminate the buyer from that that transaction, it will now be only one agent or one seller or the seller yeah. and their agent to decide whether or not the deal goes through when concessions are needed. And sometimes reducing commission is the easiest way to close those gaps. Yeah. Because if someone doesn't have the additional $1,500 in this case, that's just not gonna fall out of thin air into their lap and land in their escrow account and to close that deal. And so, so, but here's the other thing too, and I wanna make sure I make this point, because there's a lot of people are like, yeah, real realtors suck, everyone in the business of finance sucks. Okay, fine. But here's the thing, it's also true that when people are in a bind and they need that $1,500, the professionals step up and do it. Yeah. That's the deal. That is part of what comes with it. And when you hire the right person, that comes with that person too. Yes or no? Yeah, of 100%. course. You, you of sign. Course. You, you. How many times have you done a deal like that where someone needed the money and oh, you're like, it, hey, you know it, what? I'll take a haircut so that this person can, can get their keys and move in. It happens quite a bit. And you know, we need, again, we need the proper representation. You know, and I think these, what they're trying to do is when we were talking, Andy, and you're saying buyers, we mean a buyer's agent. Yes. Correct? Thank so you. Yep. That's what we're, we're, we're discussing here. <laughs> a buyer's agent is crucial. When you have a listing agent representing both sides, who's the best interest that a seller's going to, you know, that listing agent's going to have? So, you know, mm -hmm. best so interest. the best thing, like if I'm going to go buy a vehicle, right? I'm not a mechanic. I will take my own mechanic. Obviously, in this case, I would pay for the time, but it all depends because then it'll give me negotiating power with the seller when they're selling yeah. that vehicle for me to negotiate the best price as well. Yeah. You know, and so that serves a similar purpose when you're purchasing a home <laughs> where you're going to, your, your fiduciary duty is to make sure that the buyer is getting the best, you know, the best paying Top dollar for the best property, if they're going to pay that top dollar, do that home inspection, encourage them that you got to look at all these other things. Now that's an extra set of eyes that's working as your fiduciary Yeah, to yep. make sure that you're getting that property. Yeah. And that's what kind of gets scary, you know, and I'm sure they've tried it many years back where it's just one listing agent represent both sides. But I'm sure the reason why they came with both sides Come. is because, hey, you know, we found it that it's going to not be as feasible for just a listing agent to represent both sides yeah so yeah. you know who knows what's going to happen with this it's just crazy again and i think right now coming that we're in such a state in our economy that affordability is not there mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and we saw how much money a buyer has to make now <laughs> in this this time of day you know to afford a home they have to be making 62 i think it was brian yeah more to afford a property 62 percent 60 percent yeah 62 yeah, percent yeah. more it's just crazy and now we're asking them to come up with more, more money. money this is this is crazy so i think in the end guys you know this is you know like the article states this it's going to be years before there's any resolution yeah. so i know we're talking about it because it's in the immediate it's happening right now but here's the deal there's there's countersuits that are going to happen yeah. and then of course there's the spillover effects well what else is this going to uh cause ripple effects throughout Correct. real estate and other associated rules because it's like there's layers of rules there's the local the municipal state and there's yeah. So all that's going to have to get done once it's all settled, and uh, it is going to take time. So even though we're that's talking about it. this at the end of 2023, this will not <laughs> even be settled. I would be very, very surprised if this was settled in 24. Yeah. I'm guessing it won't be till 25 or 26. You know, and here it is. This lawsuit was for 1.7. There's a new one that's coming up. 
One point one point eight billion, right? That's one point eight billion. About, this is the one. The, the this is the the uh, Sitzer and Burnett. Oh yes, I'm sorry. You're talking about the other one. I'm sorry. You're talking about the new I, one. I think it's the Gibson. You know, for two hundred billion. Like this is just yeah, crazy. That, it's get, everything's just kind of getting a little out of control. Yeah, it up for all over the nation to be able to basically. Me too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was I, part I, of that. You know, so it's like. Uh, these attorneys well, just uh, and I don't know what the, I mean it's frustrating I look I don't know what the recovery effort on that would even look like but okay <laughs> but exactly end, I feel like if you're good at what you do and your your clients see the value and you condition them to focus on result based you know uh, um, results then you know if you do your job the value of what you cost doesn't matter if you're over exceeding what you re, what you give to your clients for example yeah you charge six percent but if you sell their house for over asking price that will cover that six percent did they not earn their commission? A, yeah. A, yeah that, did they not a, earn their, did they not do their job? They yeah. oversold it and then made their money, yeah. quote unquote, yeah. earned it and it's then made the seller some? Like, yo. Increase. Or you could do it yourself and lose money. Yeah. yeah.